What's up guys? Welcome back to Golf Simulator videos. We're back with the SkyTrack Plus and we're going to do a full driver review. So this along with chipping and putting, definitely the most requested I got after we did our first look video at the SkyTrack Plus. If you haven't seen that, make sure you check it out. Full unboxing, going over all the features and different things. This video not only is going to be a full driver review, we're also going to discuss some of the questions that were asked by viewers, especially regarding the club data and how that data has come up with. So stay tuned for that. But let's just go ahead and dive right into this. If you haven't had a chance to like this video or comment below, make sure you do the comments below really help other viewers as well especially if they're questions I can answer and they can see the answers to those or anything that you want to share along those lines feedback all that but let's go ahead and get started and see what we can do now here's the goal of today I'm going to try to produce higher club head speed than normal. Um, I generally probably hang around 110 if I'm just out on course playing. I can get up to maybe 113. I've seen 114 before swinging really hard, but obviously the miss has become a little bigger. So um, you may see some fun stuff today. Um, so pay attention to that. As far as the setup goes, I notice I'm using the case this time. I just thought, you know what? It's gonna sit perfectly level and it was so easy to align because they have that edge that I can put right on the line of my mat. So I uh, figured I'd show it off what it looks like kind of in use. Um, you know, it is a like plastic material. It's not metal. So uh, whether the metal would interfere with that dual radar system they have now, um, I'm not sure, but I wanted to let you guys just be aware of that. But let's go ahead and just see if we can make some hard swings. If you guys remember the original SkyTrack, and I, I should bring this up before we get started. And you guys probably saw this in some Encores videos I did. It tended to miss, maybe above like 108 as far as club speed. You could get a miss here and there. It would still pick it up. I mean, I watched PGA Tour pros hit on the thing way higher club head speed than me, and it would pick them up, but you would get a miss here and there. The good news was is it was a complete miss, so you just tee it back up again and you'd be good to go. You probably saw it on a couple on-course videos it happened to me, but it was no big deal. Tee it back up, good to go. So I'm going to try to generate that higher speed today and hit a handful of shots to see if it picks them all up, and then also pay attention to the rest of the data. We'll get dive more into the club data like I talked about as well, but let's just see what kind of speed I can generate today. I'm not going to lie, I'm a little tired. I've been playing some charity events. It was really cold outside yesterday, uh, so body's not feeling the best, but let's see what we can produce here. I'm just swinging as hard as I can. So the misses could be big. I mean, I honestly caught that really well for as hard as I was swinging at it. I mean, 286 carry, it might be the hardest swing I can produce today. <laughs> but, so 113 club head speed. I mean, it, it's well above my average. Um, now, Skytrack saying I came 3.3 outside. My path seems to be the thing that I struggle with right now, whether I'm coming a little out to in or whether I'm coming a little in to out. But what's interesting that I found, I talked specifically with Skytrack, and they told me that the club data actually is a little different than what people might have thought because I got a lot of emails from people. The club head speed of the unit, so the 113 number, is being measured by their hardware. But the club path and the face angle are actually being calculated. So when you look at the path, the face to path, face to target, it's actually a calculated number. All right, now they're saying they put this up against tool level, tool tour level launch monitors, excuse me, and that they have a very low percentage of margin uh, of error. So um, take it for what it is. Maybe we'll try to benchmark this thing against maybe even a camera that where we can see the path and the face angle and kind of put it up against what their numbers are. Maybe do some extreme into out and out to in. I mean, when I'm swinging this hard, what we're trying to do today, um, I don't think it's really going to matter as much. We're paying attention to see if this thing can read fast club head speed, fast ball speed. I got that to 166. It was a little bit low on the face. Notice the spin was right at the top end of their optimal range, almost in the optimal range. Um, so if I would have caught that maybe a little more of the sweet spot, just a little bit higher, we would have generated probably a 170 ball speed is where I max out at if I'm swinging that hard. All right, one little miss again. And that was a little low on the face, so we should see, you know, a little bit higher spin on it. Wasn't as good a contact, so what's the carry going to be? 279, not bad. 
Club head speed though was 114. So, I mean, I swung hard at that thing, just didn't hit the sweet spot, but the spin actually wasn't too bad. So I felt it was a little low on the face, higher. If I hit the sweet spot of my driver, which would be dead center or slightly above dead center is actually the real sweet spot. That spin can go all the way down to that 2000 range. And that's really gonna be a knuckleball that's launching high. See how my launch angle is only 13? And normally it's like a 14, 15 degree launch angle with a lower spinning ball. All right, now it says that I was still out to in on that. So maybe I'm gonna to try to manipulate, and, and I, I should bring this up. I'm just teeing this right on top of the dot. They have a larger hitting zone now. People used to take the tee and sometimes put it behind the dot. I'm putting it right on the dot, and everything's going good so far. So we'll pay attention to that as well. But I mean, I got it up to 114 for you guys. I just don't know if I can get higher than that uh, without ripping an intercostal muscle or something. But let's see if I can bring it a little in to out, you know, kind of purposely, you know, fall in that in to out slot on this. And I still got to release the club though. Yeah, it was a big miss, but I feel like I brought the club more inside on that. So once again, it was low on the face, kind of felt a little healy, which would make sense why that ball would be going right. What, club head speed says it was 117. And notice the path was actually 0.8. So maybe I did get that a little bit into out. Now, 117 club head speed. That's, that would be really, really fast for me. So I'm kind of almost second guessing that number. You guys tell me what you think. But I've hit on a lot of different launch monitors. Like I said, if I'm swinging super hard, I've seen that 112, 13, 14. I don't know if I've ever really been past maybe like 115 one time. Um, trying to remember if I've ever been to 117. I don't think I have. I mean, I'm swinging super hard right now, but I'm, I'm actually bringing my hand all the way, like almost past the butt of the club too, to try to, you know, get as much speed as possible. So let's try to get better contact this time. Rather than trying to swing as hard as I can, I want to try to get this in the middle of the face because notice the ball speed's not that good. Still going to try to swing super hard. That was a better contact. I mean, I was swinging really hard still, and I felt like that was closer to the center of the face. 281 though, let's see what the data says. 112 club speed, 166 ball speed though. So what was the smash factor? 1.48, so getting better contact on the ball. Now here's what's interesting. Outside in club path, I have actually seen that from other launch monitors. My swing has changed a little bit with this extra stiff Ventus Black. I feel like I was always maybe lagging the shaft before, maybe causing a little in to out. I'm not a fitter, so I'm not sure if that's exactly what it was, but I went to get refit and he saw my club head speed and that would have been on a TrackMan unit down there, was hovering at, you know, 110, 111. Cause I, you, when you go get fit, I always tell everybody, don't go swing out of your shoes. Swing what you're gonna swing on a tee box every time you're playing. And so it hovered around like 110 or 111 for the most part. Uh, if I remember correctly. That was a little low on the face again though. Um, I thought I, I felt it hit a little bit better, still catching the spin a little high. I'm surprised that was 29.19 because I felt like I got that higher on the face, but it could have been just a little more or less healier toe and it just felt you know a little better on the club. But once 166 ball speed, it's not bad. All right, I'm gonna try to maybe do something a little similar. I'm gonna bring my right foot back a little bit, try to catch it maybe a little more inside. Well, that's going to be interesting because that should just fall out of the sky because I feel like it was high on the face. So is this a knuckleball like I see sometimes outside? 1591. Club head speed says 116. I mean, I'm, I'm swinging super hard, so it's really tough to say. I mean, I don't normally swing this hard. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm not trying to like hurt my back, but I normally don't swing this hard. Um, 116, 165, and it knuckled. I, I heard it right away. And you know, my microphone, I'll try not to do too much post audio editing, but it naturally is set to try to do some noise canceling. And so a lot of people ask me, they're like, why is it so quiet when you hit? And it's, it's actually a little bit to do with my microphone actually suppressing some of the noise. Um, I usually run a fan because it gets hot in here with the uh, gaming PC and everything. So I don't want you guys to hear all the you know, ambient noise. So 
14 degree launch angle, 1591 in the spin, straight knuckleball. Says my face was open, so I didn't release the face enough according to the club data. I was hitting a heat map that was actually really nice. And then that one was a little further outside that last shot. That was probably my first big miss. I mean, I would have probably been pretty happy with those other ones, edge of fairways, you know, not quite getting into a tree line or something. Um, so maybe I should just start swinging this hard out on the course. <laughs> if the dad, if that's what the data says. Um, all right, let's try to take, I'm going to try to take maybe, I mean, I'll swing hard, but maybe not out of my shoes. And uh, we'll just try to take a little more of like an on course, you know, swing and see if that says like 111 or so. So that's a little more of like my on-course swing. Of course, it goes straight down the fairway, you know, when you're not swinging out of your shoes. And that's the thing, like, look, that carried 277 because it was in the sweet spot. You know, this, I mean, it was a little low launch, you know, didn't quite hit up on it as much. Um, club head speed down to that 110 number. Um, that is, I mean, that's spot on with my club head speed. So I don't know if you guys noticed the tempo there. I mean, I really slowed it down. You know, I really slowed it down at the top and just, you know, smooth transition. Um, wish I would have launched that a little bit higher because those knuckleballs, when they get down lower 2000s, you know, tend to be, you know, a lot better carry. But 277 carry, you know, with some good rollout, smash factor 1.49, you know, ball speed and club head speed. Um, I'm really happy with that. I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to the shot score, but the shot score on that was 70. That's based on my shots that it takes and it puts it up against other players and kind of says like, what would you go out and shoot? Well, I can tell you the way I've been playing. I've been, you know, playing more nine hole rounds, trying to squeeze them in, you know, late at night when I actually have time and uh, 39, you know, 41. These are on, you know, whether it be a tougher course and I went out and I shot three over par, uh, filling in at a league, which is a little easier, you know, course in my opinion. So um, am I shooting a 70? No, I'm not. I mean, uh, just be transparent with you guys. I hover around a six right now index. People ask me all the time. So um, I'm not shooting a 70. I mean, maybe on an easy course I could, but, uh, and I have before on the easy course, but um, maybe like 73 or four or something like that. But, um, but yeah, not, not a 70. So it's interesting how they calculate that. I'm gonna have to ask them, but more importantly, I want you guys to comment below what you think about all of the data you've seen today. I mean, I was swinging as physically hard as I can, probably without injuring myself. Um, and then that last one was a great example of like an on-course swing, you know? Um, wasn't perfectly struck. You can see the launch angle wasn't quite as high as I'd like to see. I probably flattened it out a little bit though, the way I swung versus swinging up on it probably would make a, a little bit of a difference. Um, but yeah, I really wanna know what you guys think. So comment below. If you're looking to purchase a SkyTrack Plus, or build a home golf simulator, commercial golf simulator, whatever it may be, make sure you shoot me an email, I'll pin it at the top of the comments and put it in the description. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned. We'll have a lot more coming soon.